Hey everyone, really excited today to be talking with my special guest, Fred, who is the co-creator of Astro, the CEO of HTML, and also has some awesome history working with Skypack, Snowpack, and things that ultimately led to tools like Vite today, you could say. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Astro and why Vercel has decided to join in being the official hosting sponsor of Astro. So Fred, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, super excited to be here. Yeah, I feel like you're one of the few um, people who works in open source who is like, I'm going to live stream. And then you actually did it versus me. I'm always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to live stream. And then like a year later, zero videos. Oh, it's so hard to keep up with the schedule. It's so <laughs> hard. I was going to ask you, I saw you haven't blogged since 2015. When's that next spread blog coming out? I need a new a new post on your website. It's going to be a banger when it finally does. But yeah, <laughs> I know. I Yes, <laughs> content creation is not a... Saving up all this energy for years, just ready to drop a viral blog post. <laughs> it's the, the Rich Harris approach. Absolutely. Yeah, it only comes out every once in a while, but when it does, it's it's super high quality. 100%. Cool. Well, for, for folks tuning in, maybe some on the Vercel side who aren't as familiar with Astro, love to hear your high-level summary of what Astro is, what problem you're solving, and why you're you're very excited about it. Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, Astro is trying to solve a problem of front-end performance, ultimately, where this is two years ago now, we were looking around at the current state of frameworks, um, web development, and what we really saw was a uh, over-reliance on JavaScript, um, specifically client-side JavaScript. So the SBA architecture was super, super, um, you know, it pushed the industry forward in a really exciting way. But as that started to develop and we started to lean more and more into that, we saw this like appification of the web where a lot of sites didn't need all that complexity. So a blog, a homepage, a marketing site, um, we saw an underserved kind of, not just use case, but like frame, um, underserved architecture in terms of less JavaScript on the front end and more server rendered HTML, um, more stuff happening on the server. A lot of what Next.js is exploring with React server components, we very much saw a similar need and, and built Astro to kind of go after that. I love the angle thinking backwards from the actual product use cases that folks are building Astro sites with. I've seen a lot of like content heavy sites that are really great candidates for Astro sites. I'm curious, one, if that's like the the main archetype of customer that you're interested in. And also if you have a favorite Astro customer, a favorite Astro site. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to brag. I'm sure Next.js has a couple of pretty cool stuff, but uh, Neopets just uh, launched their new rewrite nice. um, in Astro. So yeah, pretty proud of that one as a 90s kid. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, what was the first question? Just uh, the, the use case of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that was definitely a part of the web that we just saw. And if you go through every tutorial, every getting started, it's always blog, blog, blog. And developers, I'm certainly that way when I try to build something from scratch. It's usually not build the whole thing it's more like okay what's a simple example a simple use case so we saw people leaning around content sites but grabbing tech that just felt really heavy you know what you're going to build the next facebook with might not necessarily be what you build your marketing site with um and so yeah we just started from that first principle and and kind of astro found us in a lot of ways where um we kind of built around that use case and just so many cool ideas started popping up around how you can manage content we do this really cool uh type safe markdown feature so really leaning into the content story on the web yeah, one thing you mentioned that's was kind of the genesis for why Astro and maybe how you're thinking about Astro differently from the the status quo of the web, we'll say, is shipping less client side JavaScript, right? R using the server for what it's what it's great at, and finding ways to kind of mix the client and the server for what they both have their strengths for. I'm curious if there's any other parts of Astro that you feel like are counter narrative to the way that people are building applications today, where it's your view on what makes a great web site or application, if that distinction matters in this instance? Oh, God, that's a great question. Um, part of, I don't know if there's a, this is one of those things that's been in my Twitter drafts folder for forever, because it feels <laughs> like it's so spicy that like, no matter how I phrase it, someone's going to get mad, but this feels like a safe space. Like, yeah, yeah. I see the web as this kind of spectrum of like really like not static in the sense that they can't do anything but like the majority of the site exists to consume the content of the site of the page so yeah a marketing site is kind of the perfect example of that yep. you're not like really logging into your marketing site you're not like posting and commenting and like live dynamic data um, and then on the app side you have like full apps like a figma or like an Airtable that's like a full application so you're like all your users are logged in they're all coming in they're navigating and they really want to feel snappy and 
really application like native like a native app is kind of the uh the best of that figma i think gets like a ton of recognition it's just like one of the best yeah so much power and such a clean simple web-based uh, interface um we saw all the like industry all of the open source like everyone just seemed to be looking for um stuff that was more on the power of the app side and then thinking oh well like if it's powerful enough to build an app it's powerful enough to build a marketing site like this the idea that like the complexity solves a problem and then that means that you can solve every problem like seeing the left side the static the content side as simpler of the two um and i think that was the main mental model we came in with is what if we flipped that what if we said anything should be fast and be able to serve content quickly and then we can add interactivity going from the left to the right. So instead of one way, we go the other direction. And that that's the mental model that we came up with that I think just totally everything else came from that. Um, we still think that, yeah, there's a venture world. You can put an SBA, you can put a full, you could put Figma in an Astro site, I think. I, I haven't tried, but like you can do it <laughs> because our foundation is just so simple. It's HTML. And if the HTML you want to ship is a script tag that loads an entire app, you can do that. So you can tackle the full spectrum from either side. Our take was that let's start on the other side where no one's looking and see how far we can take this. And that became Astro. Makes a lot of sense. I'm curious if your past history with web components inspired some of the design around the fact that Astro can be used with React or Svelte or really whatever you want. You're starting from a different point. And I feel like there's got to be some uh, some synergy there. <laughs> um yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I, I always wonder how much I've taken, like, yeah, subconsciously from that project because it was so focused on web components. And I think the thing that we can never really crack was what is an architecture around web components? Yeah. Um, but I think what I definitely learned there is, like, and it's been, I think ESM and, like, the modern, like, web movement of the last, so much was stagnant at the platform level for so long. And then all of a sudden, it just feels like ESM, for all of its faults, like, just totally exploded the industry of what's possible to run in the browser. Skypack was that. Like, what if you could just load React from the ether from a url instead of from npm and from webpack at the time um all of that has changed so much so yeah i think some of the like thinking openly about that tech is not being limited okay i'm building react that means i'm you know react app or i'm building with svelte that means the only thing i can touch is is felt yep there was definitely like the openness of seeing the web as you can do anything on the web that i think i definitely maybe subconsciously but still took from the uh, polymer team mm -hmm. and i feel like another good platform shift has been the return to frameworks kind of betting on the web standards, whether it's using more platform features, whether it's standardizing on a set of APIs that you can learn once and kind of write everywhere. If I learn a function of uh, an API of Astro, it's probably built on something that's a web API and I can yeah. transfer that knowledge somewhere else, which I think is just good for all web developers. Like I'm very excited about that change. Yeah. I think it's one of the better things about the edge becoming much more of like a real concept is there's no Express.js for edge runtimes. It's just too heavy, right? So we built around these like node requests and node response objects. And now the new more limiting API is the actual native, just JavaScript request, JavaScript response. And so you see these more limited platforms throwing away that old legacy that they don't really care about, bringing in actual like platform specific objects. And now I see all of us here like, oh, like that's the standard. We should move to that. If we choose that, that everyone's on, now we can simplify so much custom logic. We have an adapter for you know, Purcell, Node, Deno, and Netlify, like there's so much more now that users expect and and for us to try and take all of those on as custom, run of the mill, bespoke versus choosing standard objects. I think it's a win-win for users, frameworks, for platforms. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like it really transitions well into kind of why we wanted to make this video get on a call today to talk a little bit more about Purcell being the hosting partner for Astro and trying to help further your mission of, you know, making the web fun again, making the web fast. I'd love to hear more about how you're thinking about our partnership together and maybe some of the, you know, a little sneak peek of some of the things we're working on together for Astro and Vercel. Beautiful transition. I love it. So subtle. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I actually think something that Vercel did when no one was really paying attention that I think deserves a ton of credit. It's so small and subtle, the uh, build output API. Mm. It's one of those things where it's like, this isn't really for most users, so don't worry about it. And then it kind of flies under the radar. Yeah. Um, but what that API is for us is a way to actually leverage a lot of the Vercel features without having to like hack, without having to like figure it out ourselves. You know, it's it's a complicated API, but it's doing so much behind the scenes where we can then la you know, latch onto that. So some of the stuff we've been working on over the last couple of months, edge middleware support, the fact that there's an API for us to build on top of, I don't think there's anyone else doing that right now at the actual like platform level. So. We've been working on a couple of really cool features. 
um, edge middleware bundling your site route by route as a function per function deployment per deployment so one hot route doesn't kind of take over and uh, ruin the performance on the rest of on the rest of your site um, there's some really cool features that that api unlocks that are so so subtle but it just totally opened the door for us to come in and build some really cool stuff really quickly yeah all powered by Vercel. it's been pretty fun to, to work on that's awesome I'm, i mean from my side i'm really excited to one you to work with you more closely two to help you know continue growing the already very vibrant astro community but i think one of the things that really stuck out to me is the fact of how much you care about open source. So there's, I think there was over like 80 different contributors or con contributors back on Open Collective to Astro. So already quite a lot of people investing in the project. And then when we were talking about you know, becoming a hosting partner and you mentioned like, yeah, these funds are helping grow the open source ecosystem. This isn't going into Fred's paycheck, right? This is helping <laughs> grow the, the community of people who love Astro and build on Astro. I think that was really something that I could get behind. Um, so yeah, kudos for doing that. That's great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something that I think I wish more projects did like some projects, you know, if you have a company backing you, um, and you don't need to take money, that's fantastic. Um, we have a company backing us, but we still see that sponsorship as a great way to, um, support the people working on Astro. So we just did a, uh, we're, we're starting to re kind of pull this back up the community awards where we can just kind of give recognition to people who are doing amazing stuff in our community without strings attached, without just like, you're doing a great job. Here's like, you know, a little bit of a reward, a little recognition goes so long. Um, stuff like swag, stuff like uh, events. And yeah, it's just, it unlocks so much for us to kind of give back to the community that supports us. So yeah, a hundred percent of all funds raised go to that. And it's such an important part of open source. That I think it's really hard to do. It took us a while to get that engine up and running, but now that it's there, it's, it's one of my favorite things we can do as a project. One thing that I think that y'all do really well is kind of bring the community along for the journey and educate them on all the new concepts and the new features of Astro. So kudos to the work that your team is doing and the marketing that you've been putting out. I think one of the parts of that that I find particularly interesting is around naming. And that's not only when you're trying to educate something, but it starts a little bit earlier when you're actually designing the APIs. And I'm curious about the name Islands and kind of how you landed there or where the inspiration from that came from and, and what it's solving as well too. Yeah, that was a big decision for us. Um, we basically stole it. It was not a term that we came up with. Um, Jason Miller of the Preact team, um, he actually created a article that was basically outlining this. It was kind of the first reference point. Um, and even that was, I think, actually borrowed or based off of the work by uh, Katie Sailor Miller. Sailor Miller, I might be pronouncing that wrong, um, who had actually coined the term at Pinterest. So this was a architecture that actually had a long history of going through different organizations and teams. Um, what made it challenging was that it was pretty bespoke to set up. Like there was no like tool for working with an islands architecture. You basically had to create it yourself. So it was super inaccessible to the normal kind of average developer. Um, I think that's what Astro, um, if it gets credit for any part of this, it's to bring that to the mainstream by actually building a tool around the architecture. We didn't coin it, but when it came time to that, like, do we try to call this something else? We saw so much already mindshare in that, that we could tap into and uh, yeah, avoid the whole problem of naming entirely by just using what was already out there. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the key thing for the the philosophy of, well, let's use less client-side JavaScript, let's use more of the server, is that when you want to actually have the bit of interactivity, you get an opt-in to using an island of interactivity. Is that kind of how you would sell it? Yeah. Yeah. You basically imagine the page instead of one big app, and instead it's a almost like a canvas. It's a canvas of, by default, static HTML. But obviously a, a totally static site isn't going to be very compelling. You want uh, a button or an image carousel or, or a drop down. All these things rely on JavaScript. So instead of saying to solve that, we need to think of the site as an application. Islands Architecture says, think of that one component on the page as an application, like a little small island of interactivity. And we're going to basically hydrate that. And once we give you that power, now you can almost start to uh, decouple your entire architecture. So that drop down might be you know, a call to action. We really want to make sure that loads quickly that super heavy video player or the image embed or the tweet embed, um, let that load lighter. Maybe even only if you scroll down to it and otherwise we won't even load it. So at the time you're thinking of a whole app as this one big bundle of JavaScript. What, Ast what Astro is able to do with Island's architecture is think of it as a canvas. Every piece can be handled um, almost entirely as the use case of that one component allows. I love it because I, of course, spend a lot of time talking about server components and, and what Next.js is doing. And there's a lot of really great shared ideas, I think, between the two. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see this 
model kind of finding its way in different permutations and different forms and with different trade-offs finding its way into the ecosystem um, so that more people can see the value of this. So I'm I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, it's a funny analogy to where Next.js is going with React server components because so much of that model as I see it is like a similar idea, right? Like we don't need to serve JavaScript for the stuff that's static, but we're not going to um, put that in front of you. We're going to basically automate that all for you. So you decide if you want JavaScript or not, if this is client interactive or not, um, without sacrificing the application feel of the page all working together. So yeah, I think it's a funny joke of like Astro versus Next is actually mentally where we're both going is actually very aligned and two different approaches to that. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting part of the uh, the future of the web that we both see. A hundred percent. And I think too, what maybe some people don't see, especially because I spend a lot of time talking about Next.js and React is like from my, from my Vercel hat on, like the web wins when every idea like Astro, when every idea like Solid, when every idea like Remix when they also win. And we have to have a bunch of different options and a bunch of different type of tools for developers to choose from. So from Purcell's perspective, from that perspective, I'm super happy to be partnering closer with y'all because we want Purcell to be the place where you can deploy your Astro sites and you know build the next Pinterest or build the next Neopets, right? We wanna, <laughs> we wanna really have these uh, really awesome uh, Vercel and Astro customers. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to be partnering closer. And I'm, I mean, thank you so much for taking the time out today as well to talk through some of this stuff. I think, I think a lot of people will really enjoy hearing your, your thoughts on this. Yeah, right on. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And yeah, love working with you all as well. The feelings mutual. Well, thank you so much.